Hello, everyone. So many people, men in particular, often ask me why I consider myself to be a feminist. It's a good question. And I wasn't born a woman, but I very well could have been. And it's a good exercise to step back and think, how different would my life have been if I was? Would I have had the same opportunities? Does my potential future daughter have the same opportunities as my potential future son? And the answer is no, not yet. But I believe that feminism can change that. The problem is that men have created social limits uh, based on the stereotypes that we made. And I believe that feminism and social equality can help us deconstruct the pre-existing social norms in our circles and pave way for a fair and equal world. This is why I'm a feminist, because to me, feminism is equality. And in fact, the cause of feminism affects not only women, but men as well. Now, currently, we still live in a world of a lot of gender stereotypes. In fact, from the day we're born, we're wrapped in a blue blanket for boys or a pink blanket for girls, when in fact, not all boys may be boys and not all girls may be girls. And so I was born in Ukraine, and although I don't really have many memories from my early childhood, there's one in particular that stands out. One winter, and it's cold in Ukraine, when I was around four or five, my mother and I, we wanted to go and play in the snow. So as the little child, you know, I was dressed first, and so I stood by the door waiting for my mother to finish getting ready. And as I stood there, I was all dressed up, and it was getting really hot and uncomfortable. I was getting sweaty, frustrated, and a lump formed in my throat, and I started to cry. Now, my father, who was in the living room, he heard me, and he walked over. He looked at me, and he said, stop crying, boys don't cry. And so I forced myself to stop. And that wasn't the last time it happened. Until my teenage years, I thought that emotions in men are not OK. But boys do cry. And in fact, we should. And I wish I could cry. It's so relieving. The problem is that many men have been raised with the idea that we have to be tough, that we have to be in control, we have to keep our emotions at bay, and to quote unquote, not be like a girl. That's very limiting, leaves a little room for vulnerability, individuality. And speaking from personal experience, that can be very damaging. That's why I believe that deconstructing the pre-existing social norms can help not only women, but men as well. And one way we could do that is with technology and innovation. So I'm not much older than many of the people in the audience here. I'm only 19. And so several years back when I was going through high school, I went through a program called YEL, Young Entrepreneur Leadership Launchpad. So for those of you who are still in grades 10 or 11, I really suggest, if you haven't heard of the program, to look it up and perhaps join if it's available in your school district. So in the program, uh, I partnered up with three very talented young ladies, and they brought forth to the table the problem of public safety. There's one shocking statistic that each year in the US alone, there are roughly 322,000 reported rape and sexual assault cases, and many more go unreported. Now, in this room today, there's roughly 1,500 people. So we created Searing, a smart jewelry emergency alert platform so that you can call for help if needed. And the, the women that led the way, they've gone on to focus on their post-secondary studies. But I've continued because I'm very passionate about the project. I would like the woman in my life and my potential future daughter to be safe. We still have a long way to go, and there's still a lot of change that needs to be happen. That needs to happen. And so far, it has been women that have been leading the way. And for men that are in the audience today, you should step up and speak up. We were a part of the problem, so let's be a part of the solution. And this is my way. What's yours? Thank you.